Weather modification technologies, including the much-discussed HARP High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, have long been surrounded by controversy and fascination. At its core, HARP was developed to study the Earth's ionosphere, a layer of charged particles that plays a key role in radio communication and satellite operations. Despite its scientific objectives, HARP has become the subject of numerous claims suggesting it can control or alter weather patterns. And, but what do these claims really mean and what does the science say? In simple terms, weather modification involves altering atmospheric conditions through various techniques, such as cloud seeding to induce rain, or even using high-energy instruments to study atmospheric dynamics. HARP, however, was never designed to control the weather. Its primary function was to investigate natural processes in the ionosphere. Yet the complexity of atmospheric science, combined with a lack of public understanding, has fueled theories that HARP can trigger extreme weather events or even manipulate natural disasters. Have you ever wondered how much influence humans can truly have over the weather? Many scientists and experts argue that while we can influence certain weather phenomena on a very local or small scale, like cloud seeding to encourage rainfall, the idea of controlling the entire weather system is far more complicated and currently beyond our technological reach. The atmosphere is an enormous interconnected system influenced by countless factors, from solar radiation to ocean currents. As a result, the notion that a single facility or technology could control atmospheric conditions has little grounding in the robust scientific understanding of our planet's weather dynamics. So why does HARP attract such controversy? Part of the reason is the secrecy that once surrounded its operations and the sensitive nature of its research, which led to speculation about military applications and potential misuse. However, once HARP's research findings were published and its operations became more transparent, many of the more extreme claims lost credibility. For instance, while HARP can send radio waves into the ionosphere to study how they interact with natural phenomena, there is no evidence to suggest that it can be used to create hurricanes or control storms. Understanding these issues requires a critical look at the available scientific evidence. Researchers continue to study the ionosphere and other aspects of atmospheric science to improve our understanding of natural weather patterns. At the same time, it's important to approach controversial claims with a healthy dose of skepticism and rely on peer-reviewed studies rather than sensationalized reports. What do you think is the difference between influencing a natural process and controlling it entirely? In summary, weather modification technologies, including HARP, open up fascinating discussions about the intersection of scientific research and public perception. While small-scale interventions like cloud seeding have been successfully used in some areas to modify weather patterns, the leap to total weather control remains a topic of speculation and conspiracy rather than proven science. It's a reminder of how complex and dynamic our natural world is and how important it is to understand the science behind the claims. Would you be interested in exploring more about how our atmosphere works and what realistic technological advancements might look like in the field of weather modification? Weather modification involves using scientific techniques to alter atmospheric conditions, such as increasing rainfall or dispersing fog, harp, High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program was established primarily to study the ionosphere, the upper layer of Earth's atmosphere and its natural interactions with solar energy. Its experiments are designed to observe natural processes, not to control or change weather patterns deliberately. Although some claim HARP can control weather, the scientific community maintains that its capabilities are limited to research and data collection. For instance, HARP has been used to simulate the natural effects of solar activity on the ionosphere, which helps improve communication systems rather than create storms. It's like using a telescope to study the stars. You're gathering information about how they naturally shine, not altering their brightness. HARP transmits high-frequency radio waves into the ionosphere to study how this layer reacts to energy from the sun. The project helps scientists understand the behavior of charged particles and the effects of geomagnetic storms on communication and navigation systems. Researchers use these controlled experiments to learn about natural atmospheric phenomena, not to engineer weather. 
The technology and energy used are modest compared to the vast energy involved in natural weather systems. For example, scientists use HARP to observe how radio waves propagate in the ionosphere, much like testing the performance of a radio antenna under different conditions. This process is similar to using a fan to study airflow in a room. It provides controlled insights into natural movement without altering the overall environment. Controversial claims suggest that HARP can control weather, trigger earthquakes, or even cause tsunamis. However, no rigorous scientific study has verified these assertions, and the evidence available shows that HARP's function is strictly observational. Researchers have repeatedly demonstrated that the energy levels and mechanisms employed are far too limited to influence large-scale weather systems. The controversy often arises from misinterpretations and sensationalized media reports rather than empirical data. For example, despite numerous conspiracy theories circulating online, peer-reviewed studies confirm that HARP's experiments are used to study natural ionospheric behavior, not to manipulate the weather. It's like saying a laboratory microscope can rearrange the molecules in a drop of water. While it reveals details, it doesn't change the overall structure. The ionosphere is a layer of the atmosphere filled with charged particles that play a key role in radio communication and satellite operations. Natural processes, such as solar radiation and geomagnetic activity, continuously influence its properties. HARP's experiments are designed to understand these complex interactions and improve our technological systems. However, the inherent variability and scale of the ionosphere mean that its behavior is dictated by natural forces far beyond the control of current technology. For example, researchers have used HARP data to refine models that predict how solar storms disrupt communication signals providing valuable insights into improving system reliability. This is like studying the ripples on a pond caused by a falling leaf. You can observe and model the ripples, but you cannot control the vast amount of water influencing the overall behavior. The experiments conducted under HARP involve transmitting radio waves and measuring their interactions with the ionosphere, which provides detailed information about natural plasma dynamics. These experiments help improve our understanding of how energy from the sun affects Earth's atmosphere. The evidence collected is used to enhance technologies like GPS and radio communications rather than to alter weather patterns intentionally. The lack of evidence for deliberate weather control underlines that HARP scope is firmly within the realm of basic research. For example, data from HARP has led to improved forecasts for satellite signal disruptions during solar events, directly benefiting communication networks. It's akin to running tests on a car engine to understand its performance. These tests help optimize the engine's design without changing the basic physics that govern how the engine works. Many of the controversial claims about HARP stem from misinterpretations of scientific data and sensationalized media coverage. The technical language used in research can be confusing, leading some to assume that complex experiments automatically imply the ability to control nature. In reality, Scientists use HARP to study natural phenomena, and the media often exaggerates these findings to create dramatic narratives. The consensus among experts is that the project's scope is limited to observation, not manipulation of weather systems. For example, even though headlines sometimes claim that HARP controls the weather, scientific reviews and peer-reviewed studies clearly show that its purpose is data collection and analysis. It's like reading a mystery novel with a twist ending. You might get excited by the speculation, but the actual story is based on careful, measured investigation. The energy required to alter large-scale weather patterns is immense and far exceeds what current technologies, including HARP, can provide. While techniques such as cloud seeding have shown limited success in modifying local weather, they operate on a much smaller scale. The complexity and variability of the atmosphere make it extremely difficult to control weather in any significant or sustained way. Thus, current research remains focused on understanding rather than altering these natural processes. For example, cloud seeding has been used to encourage rainfall in small regions, but even these efforts yield only modest and temporary changes in precipitation. It's like trying to change the course of a river with a garden hose. The tool is simply not powerful enough to redirect such a massive natural system. 
The idea of deliberately modifying weather raises serious ethical questions and environmental concerns. There is potential for unintended consequences, such as disrupting local ecosystems or creating imbalances in water distribution. Researchers and policymakers emphasize that any attempt at weather modification must undergo rigorous environmental impact assessments and be subject to strict Current projects like HARP are designed with safety and transparency in mind, ensuring that research is conducted responsibly. For example, before any weather modification experiment is conducted, extensive environmental studies are performed to assess the risks. Similar to safety protocols in engineering projects, it's like planning a major construction project. You must ensure that the changes won't harm the surrounding area and that every step is carefully reviewed for safety, Advances in atmospheric science might one day offer more precise tools for localized weather modification, but this remains a long-term possibility. Any such advancements would require comprehensive testing, international collaboration, and stringent regulatory frameworks to ensure safety and fairness. The primary focus remains on understanding natural atmospheric processes to benefit technology and communications. Currently, there is no evidence that we can or should attempt to control weather on a large scale. For example, future research might develop targeted techniques to mitigate the effects of severe storms, but these methods would be carefully regulated to avoid unintended consequences. Imagine upgrading from a basic car to a high-performance vehicle. The new technology might offer better control, but it must be handled responsibly and within strict safety guidelines.